Hello everyone, my name is Aishwarya Mukundan here and I'm a PhD student in Dr. Helen Kampfer's class lab at Kent State University. We study ADAR mediated RNA editing and as you can see from the title here, in this study we have looked at RNA editing landscape in response to SARS-CoV-2 infection, the pathogen responsible for recent COVID-19 pandemic. So most studies on SARS-CoV-2 focus on the virus itself and how it affects the host. But we are interested in looking at dynamic changes in the host as a consequence of infection. SARS-CoV-2 was a complex pathogen, affecting multiple organ systems, such as nervous system, cardiovascular system, and even musculoskeletal system, and shows an array of symptoms. So when the virus enters the cell, like any other virus, it elicits an innate immune response that ultimately leads to the production of interferon-stimulated genes including an isoform of ADAR1 called ADAR-P150. ADARs are enzymes that catalyze enzymatic deamination of adenosine residues in double-stranded RNA to enosins, a phenomenon called ADAR editing. This is dynamic and highly regulated in a normal state. ADAR editing plays a very important role in brain development, hematopoiesis, and is responsible for fighting viral infections by editing viral RNAs, and the same is seen in SARS-CoV-2. But, an unintended consequence of this innate immune activation is that it alters the normal editing patterns in the host transcriptome. Altered RNA editing patterns can lead to amino acid substitutions if that happens in the coding region of a gene. Additionally, it can affect alternative splicing and also interfere with microRNA biogenesis and targeting. An example of such altered RNA editing leading to amino acid substitution is the serotonin receptors that are important in normal physiological processes such as learning, memory, emotions, sleep, and much more. The mRNA coding for this receptor carries five editing sites, and a fully edited isoform of this, this receptor are less efficient in downstream signaling. Now, the challenge is that editing happens at millions of sites in the transcriptor. So how do we study changes in ADAR editing patterns? We are using a publicly available RNA sequencing dataset from NCBI SRA database. The dataset comes from a longitudinal study conducted on U.S. Marine recruits around the beginning of the pandemic and was screened at different time points using RT-PCR and antibody testing to confirm the presence of pathogen. That gives us samples from three different time points. Controls indicating no infection, mid infection samples, and post infection samples, basically post viral clearance confirmed by RT PCR. For analysis of RNA seq data and identification of putative variants, we used a computational pipeline developed in our lab called Automated Isoform Diversity Detector, or AID. AID is a customized pipeline that uses a combination of various open source tools and allows us to perform traditional RNA-seq expression analysis with downstream analysis of RNA editing patterns. Based on our analysis, we first asked if ADA1 is in fact altered in response to SARS-CoV-2 infection. And as you can see from this graph here, we see an increased expression of ADA1 in mid-infection samples that return to normal pre-infection states post-viral clearance. Next, we looked at global RNA editing patterns. We looked at both editing frequency, that represent the total number of edits in the sample, and editing levels, that is the ratio of alternative alleles to total alleles for an individual site. Our results showed a significant increase in the frequency of edits during infection, and contrary to what was expected, the frequency of edits post-infection decreased, indicating the effects of viral infection may have persistent impact on cellular processes related to RNA editing. Next, we looked at changes in editing levels in, in editing sites that was present across all conditions. We observed a significant number of sites to be differentially edited when comparing controls to infection samples and infection samples to post-infection samples. That shows the dynamic nature of these editing sites in response to SARS-CoV-2 infection, as well as editing as a possible contributor towards pathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Next, to understand the possible functional consequences of these edits and biological pathways that might be impacted, we analyzed our editing sites using the functional annotation tool, SNPF, and further looked pathways overrepresented among impacted genes. We observe a significant fall in the number of high and moderate impact edits and subsequent increase during post-infection indicating that SARS-CoV-2 infection may have long-lasting effects on RNA editing processes in the host, potentially contributing to the persistence of symptoms or long-term complications. 
pathway over representation analysis of these genes harboring high and moderate impact edits showed unique pathways implicated in disease and immune system functioning to be impacted. In future, we want to expand this study to look at sex-specific differences in editing as a consequence of SARS-CoV-2 infection and explore the consequences of RNA editing beyond coding regions. I want to thank National Science Foundation and Kent State Graduate Student Senate for their generous fellowship awards which made this presentation possible. Thank you very much for listening.